Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Heavenly Parent Holy Community in Oceania Hundoke with our Reverend Yutaki Yamada on this day, Thursday, the 4th of March, which is the 21st day of January in the ninth year of Chong Yul Guk. Let's begin with a, a bow to our true parents, Chariot Kyombe. Baro. And then we'll recite family pledge in Korean and English. Kajon men se o Chon Yikuk Juin Uri Kajogun Cham Sarangul Chun Shimago Mail Chichok Chon San Segewa Te San Chok Chisan Sege Toil Kanghe Chon Jin Chok Pal Chon Chok Chinal Kosul Men Se Hanaida. Family pledge number five. Our family, the owner of Chong Yul Guk, pledges to strive every day to advance the unification of the spirit world and the physical world as subject and object partners by centering on true love. And, uh, uh, I'd like to ask uh, Abel and Vanuatu to offer the opening prayer. Thank you. Prayer. Good morning once again, our most eternal brother and father, court of heaven and earth and all humankind. So grateful, Father, once again this morning for this new day, Father. We pray, Father, for our beloved true mother. She's always in the front line. We pray, Father, may your blessing always be upon her. I pray, Father, this morning, send ring on our continent director, uh, Reverend Yudaka Yamada. We pray, Father, thank you for such blessing, a wonderful message, Father, that is going to be offered to us today. We pray, Father, want to thank you, Father, for all these blessings which you have given us. This prayer would like to everybody in all our names. In my name, Ebol, Father, and our person, general family, uh, to, uh, to, to. Thank you. So, uh, welcome, everyone, and... Uh, we have 42 people connected this morning at the moment, and uh, it's good to see everyone. So let's all welcome our Revenue Taku as he gives us Mundoke. Thank you. Okay, good morning, everyone, our brothers and sisters. Thank you for coming this morning devotion. Today is the 21 days. Nearly each day, we will prepare our chonson and put the heart and let's make a great day. So today also, uh, we will share our true mother's autobiography, A Mother of Peace. So yesterday, uh, we talked about true mother's, uh, that the born time, when true mother was born, what kind of things happen around, surrounding the true mother, we share about uh, Satan's attack to Temonim, about dream or challenging. And also among the yesterday's testimony of our brothers and sisters also share the spiritual experience and also meeting with true parents in the dream. So those meeting, this spiritual experience, a dream itself is a really precious moment and an important moment. Of course, Sometimes um, the evil spirit work is also coming together. That's why we have to distinguish even there is some spiritual matter or some dream. We have to pray well and also have to find this is really from God's side or from Satan's side. So anyway, we, yesterday we talked about our true mother's birth time and also several dream together. So today, let's continue. So today's contents may basically are mainly about also true mother's uh, early childhood time, but also especially true mother's grandfather and the true mother's uh, father. So those story will come. So I will read today a uh, little bit many, many contents. So let's read. 
My father played an essential role. All right, from now on, you should wear this. You should wear this when you go out. My maternal grandfather told me. I looked at the strange footwear and asked, what are these? They are called high heels, he said. So this is the meeting with grandfather. So to mother's memory of the grandfather. So this grandfather is husband of Cho Wonmo, grandmother. And actually this title, my father played an essential role. This is the subtitle in English. Of course, contents is maybe those contents, father and grandfather, but in the Korean title, a little bit different. So I just, uh, uh, for your information, I will share. This title in Korean is, In Times of Darkness, A Choice to Receive the Lord. So again, In Times of Darkness, A Choice to Receive the Lord. So sometimes a little bit different, but if you can, uh, remember the Korean title is good. So talking about even in the darkness, really how we can welcome, how they try to welcome the Lord and second coming. So those story is in this chapter. During the Japanese colonial rule in rural Korea, Western fashions such as high heels, were almost never seen in rural areas. My grandfather, Hon Yu Il, however, was an enlightened gentleman who welcomed modern things. He personally had gone into the city and bought high heels for all the women in his family. He was tall, friendly, and handsome, and everyone highly respected his progressive thinking. So we, we watched yesterday the video about Trimada's early time and also the photo in Korea 100 years ago. So when we see the 100 years ago Korean village, the early Korean village is the traditional Korean village. No, there is no a Western fashion or Western culture at all. But a grandfather at that time, Hong Yu Il grandfather, already advanced thinking to find the Western new culture, a new fashion, and also the, give the gift, high heel to the women in his family. Uh, this kind of memory is very beautiful memory. Even your mother is remember those memory or those story uh, she is remembering. So how this grandfather thinking and there is a love and the share also try to find the new culture. Those things is really great. Even 100 years ago, uh, really not easy situation, but he found and he have those kind of mindset to share to the family members. Even though he had grown up in the household of strict Confucian, Confucian tradition, he was ahead of his time. Interestingly, when I met Father Moon for the first time, I thought in my heart that he resembled my grandfather. That was one reason I could feel at ease with Father Moon when I first met him, even though I was only 13. He was not a stranger to me. So to mother feel this grandfather's feeling and the Father Moon to the father's feeling is some kind of similar feeling or a resemble feeling. When true mother met true father, that time she was 13, 13 years old. That is in 1956. That is the first meeting for true mother to meet true father. Just she was 13 years old. And how, how old true father, true father was? 36 years old, so 23 years gap age, but mother feel from true father like grandfather feeling, really close feeling. And I think another thing is maybe true father's hometown and the 
grandfather's hometown was also similar, same place in Chonju. So those culture and atmosphere and fatherly heart, grandfather heart, and those loving heart, I think this is also similar feeling. So mother feel inside of true father, also feel the grandfather's loving this atmosphere together. My maternal grandmother Cho Wonmo was a pitied woman with beautiful futures. In addition to being a devout Christian, she was industrial and active. She made a living by running a small business called the Pyong An store, selling and repairing sewing machines. At the time, sewing machines were expensive and they were considered the most important part of a bride's trousers. Town, townspeople admired my grandmother for giving big discount to the family of new brides and for setting up payment plans, something unheard, unheard of back then. Grandmother used to go from village to village to collect the monthly payments, carrying me on her back. I first experienced the wider world on those ex executions. So those story also talking about the grandmother Cho Wonmo. So she is she is having she is the devoted Christian, and she is having the stores. And also she is preparing and selling and repairing the sewing machine. So when women go to the wedding and go to the husband's house, every time they brought some kind of a bride's torso. So that time the sewing machine was a good gift to the new families. I don't know, Australia, those, those culture also, there is those culture or island nation there is those culture when you go to when you go to the wedding and when you go to the new house wife bring some gift to the new house is there those kind of culture in your nation or your island nation not so much just join or husband will bring something or wife bring something or both side doesn't bring anything in the past, there used to be a trousseau. Girls used to um, prepare a trousseau, but these days, no. Ah, so God side prepare? Yeah, in the past, they had there. Ah, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. some nations still have those culture. I think in Thailand also still have one side. Some country bring from the women's side, but some country bring from the men's side. So we can see each nation different this the culture, but in Korea, uh, the bride trousseau every time bring to the new house, new families. So that time, uh, through mother together with grandmother to visit village to village and house to house. So when we see those story, really we can imagine they are the family atmosphere. There is a simple family in some village, organize some small shop and spend the time with the village person, but really generous heart, always loving the peoples in the village and share them and giving them and also stay the laughing together. Really can imagine those village situation. My grandfather's family moved from Chonju, which is my husband's hometown, and crossed the Chonchon River to the town of Anju, to be precise, Shinnui, Shinnui, a village in the town of Anju. My mother inherited grandmother Chon Wonmo's devout faith. They attended a local Presbyterian church in Anju until she was age 19. The pastor of the church actually gave my mother her name, Honsune. My mother studied at Anju grade school 
and in 1936 graduated from a Christian mission school called Pyongyang Saints Academy. So grandfather and grandmother that time they moved from Cheonju, the father's true father's hometown to Anju. So true mother almost grew up when true mother was born in Anju and true mother was also grown up in Anju. So Honsune Temonim also same, spend the time in Anju, study there, learning there, and really inherited the Christian faith from grandmother and went to church every time. My parents were married in the New Jesus Church on March 5, 1934, and I, their first and only child, was born in 1943, nine years later. That unusually long interval elapsed not because my parents were inf infertile, but because they were living separately, each engrossed in their lives of faith. And for my father, his career as an educator, he taught in Yombek County, Fanghe province, which was some distance from my maternal, maternal home, and my mother did not want to move there. My mother's intense devotion to Jesus led her to focus all her time and attention on her church work. So, uh, mother's parents, uh, Temonim, and also uh, Father Hansung Eun, uh, they received, they got the marriage in 19. 34, but true mother was born in 1943. So this interval is around for nine years. And also they stay, they don't stay together. They living separately because Honsne Temonim is really focused for the church, church work and the father is focusing for his job. So when we see our mother's some environment, and also the parents' environment. Really, father is working by own area and mother is for mission and also uh, couldn't have a pregnant long time. So we can imagine how their family environment um, looks not so much easy uh, environment, husband, wife, doesn't stay together and also doing the separately and separate place. So husband almost doesn't stay together with uh, grand, the mother, right? So yeah, you can imagine this background, but father is working and focusing for job and mother is focusing for the mission. So, uh, every time we can see some spiritual group name, they receive, they got the marriage in the New Jesus Church. Do you remember New Jesus Church? So I will, if those those spiritual spiritual church's name appear, I will share, I will show this photo again and again. There are three kinds of spiritual group in Korea that time, East and the West. East is spiritual group, spiritual Christianity group centering on men, and West is spiritual group centering on women, and each group is really connected to the uh, second coming, true father and the true mother's life, directly connected. Even there are many kinds of spiritual group, and especially these three is the main spiritual group in male side, and the three is the spiritual main group in women's side. So New Jesus Church is the male side. The second one, E Yondo. You can see Reverend E Yondo. He was the church leader. And this church called the New Jesus Church. And the true father has also connection with New Jesus Church. And also that time, true mother's mother. So Honsune Temonim and Hansun Un father uh, get the marriage in New Jesus Church. 
and later uh, they are continuously also going to the new Jesus Church. So when you read the true mother's autobiography, and when you read the true father's autobiography, you can see in the background of history, actually many connections behind this spiritual group and this woman spiritual group, men spiritual group, and this people's name and the leader's name, some place they are they are meet they are meeting each other through some person, not directly between true father and true mother or true father and consonant temonym, but centering on some Christian leader or churches, father also meeting this group and mother also meeting this group or person. So when you read true mother's autobiography and you read true father's autobiography, you can see how interconnection there was happening behind of this story or this period. So this is really interesting. There was another reason as well. My maternal grandparents, the Hons, wished to make my father, Hon Sung Un, their heir. But he did not accept it. As the eldest son of the Han family, his parents did not allow him to put his roots down in his wife's home. So she would not, so she would not move in with him, nor him with her. But God wanted me to be born, and so I arrived in my grandparents' home in Sinuri, Anju. I grew up there and came to accept God quite naturally. So we can see the grand grandmother side, the maternal grandparent side, the Hon uh, Cho Gon Mo and Hong Yu Il, this grandparents couple, they wish father, a handsome un father to be the adopted son, come to their hair, their wish. But the handsome un father side didn't want that. That's why uh those kind of situation was happen so temonim honsune temonim would not move in with him and also a hansun un father also would not move with her so when we read this story actually um i'm not sure how what kind of relationship really temonim and hansun un and the father and mother relationship they are looks, they don't live together, they don't stay together, and they are living separately. So anyway, mother also share like this. But because God wish, mother was born and also stay in the grandparents' house in Anju. We can see also that this family. 1945, when Korea regained its independence, the great powers divided our peninsula at the 38th parallel, and soon the joy of having our country back turned into despair. The Russians put the Korean Communist Party in charge, and it implemented policies backed by brutal oppression. I was four years old when my father suddenly appeared at our home to announce Conditions are not going to improve here. I cannot have my family live in North Korea. Let us go south. So even after independent in 1945, that moment people was happy, but immediately there was another big power is coming in centering on the Korean Peninsula. Russia side is also coming and also American side is coming from South and many mixing situation was happening in centering on the 38th parallel and also those kind of the policy was applied. That's why suddenly father, Hansen Un father came to the house and he said, we cannot stay in this North Korean area. We have to move to South Korean area quickly. I'm not sure at that time there's maybe not Korea yet, North Korea or South Korea, South Korea, but in area, the northern part and southern part was slightly started to divide it to the different 
under different parties. That's why father suddenly came to go to move to south. Then how about the, the Han, Honsune Temonim's decision or reply? My mother, ah, oh, this I could not see. Not help, but think hard about my father's unexpected request. While she had been living with the sole purpose of beating the Lord at the second advent, she actually did not know what she would do when she met him. Her husband's request tore her in two. Would it be better to stay here and walk the unknown path of God's will, or should I elect to live as an ordinary housewife? She pondered these things and then made up her mind, I will not succumb to the communist persecution. She said, I will stay here and continue to walk the path of faith to receive the Lord. My father was dumbfounded, but he left as he had determined to do. So when father suddenly come to the family, even Honsune Temunim was surprised and she was confused and think, how would she do? She should go with him or just she should stay and follow to Jesus. She was thinking and thinking and thinking and finally she decided to follow Jesus. She, she tried to follow to the God's will. That's why father just left the family and she went, he went to the southern part by himself. And my mother, uh, this cannot read, the only person to remain in the north out of faith that Jesus was going to appear there. Pyongyang was called the Jerusalem of the, the East. The Christianity was in full bloom there. It was a holy place where churches were making preparations to receive the Messiah at the second coming. Though mainstream Christians said he would come on the clouds, the spirit-led groups in Pyongyang believed, believed he would come in the flesh. My mother, along with my grandmother, believed that completely. They were not attending the they were they were now attending the new jesus church one of the most fervent churches in the city my mother resolved to remain in pyongyang and continue her mission as a member of a faithful household of the messiah so finally uh, mother's mother uh, hons netemonim decided to stay to the north korean area and just she focused to find the Jesus. So in that moment, many, many, there are many kinds of spiritual group and they believe the second coming of Messiah is coming in the flesh. That's why they totally believe now Jesus will come. So even mother's mother and grandmother really waited for Jesus and their most priority, first priority is really to meet the second coming of Jesus. Now, because Jesus is coming, that's why I have to meet the Jesus here. So even Temonim doesn't follow the husband, just follow the Jesus and live for God, live for Jesus and live for the daughter, our true mother. So when I read this part, it remind one family story in the Bible. Can you find a similar person in the Bible about this grandmother's, I don't know, the temonym, mother's story plus our true mother's story together in the Bible? It reminds me one family about the Jesus and also the Maria. How was the Maria's responsibility and also Jesus? Jesus actually could not stay together with the real father that time. And what was Maria's responsibility? After um, receiving Jesus, 
actually Maria should not have the family relationship with husband that time in the Joseph. And mother's, ma Maria's responsibility was to totally focus for the Jesus. But that time Maria spent the time and have the relationship with husband. That's why Maria's concern and mind and every spirit is going to the another place. But how about our Temonim spirit? Temonim doesn't care, not doesn't care, but Temonim doesn't, didn't choose for the husband or ordinary life. She totally devote to God, devote to Jesus, second coming, and also take care to the mother. So her, her life is totally clear. My life is not for myself. My life is for Jesus, second coming, and also to my daughter. That's why uh, Temonim show this kind of life of faith and uh, keep their uh, spirit to love and take care of the true mothers. So totally true mother and the Temonim spend the, spend the role, as play the role as the nanny and really offer everything. So we can see how strong she was. So I, I wonder among you, some, someone, have you met, have you met the Temonim directory physically in your life before? Did you meet or did you talk with her? Really, when we, when I read this, the Temonim story, Temonim actually, they are not simple person. Her commitment and her determination and her investment sacrifice is really great just for God. And just for Jesus, really she loved Jesus so much and really love second coming and true father and even also true mother. That's why really we can see how Temonim herself is really the great person. That's why true mother received this kind of a strong life of faith and the loving God, loving people, loving Jesus and loving also second coming. And that's why uh, she could overcome all trial, challenging, and finally really raise her up to met, to let true mother to meet true father. So really we can see the Temonim's uh, great face. So anyway, today's, because many kind of the background story there, so a little bit, uh, we, I did uh, speed it uh, quickly. So true mother's grandfather, and through mother's father and through mother's um, through mother's mother's story, they are going on like this. So how much from the environment of true mother? Many people love her and prepare. Even looks like family situation. Somehow there are many kind of challenging situation, but through mother really receive love and they really grew up well. So once again, they really appreciate those story and especially this Temonim story, her life, her commitment is really strong. So we can feel uh, their heart and their investment. So today also we will have a great day. So I hope everyone have a, a create a new day and a beautiful day and let's great. Let's make a great day to offer the happiness to our heavenly parents and true parents. So thank you very much everyone. Yeah, thank you, Reverend Yusaka. Okay. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Uh, I yeah, uh, a couple of things struck me. Uh, growing up as Greek Orthodox, you know, we we call that uh, trousseau a glory box, <laughs> and the weddings went to three days and. Uh, uh, plates were smashed and money was pinned on the, the bride's dress as they did the first dance. So many things I was thinking of at that beginning uh, moment of talking about the bride uh, being prepared. But uh, yeah, I, I, I just, you know, just amazed how they really did put God first in their life as absolutely uh, 
God the first thing in the morning and they're focused. And um, I, I, I wonder how their family was considered in by other families, you know, knowing that Koreans are very much family orientated to, to think that there was a husband and wife and they're just living in different places, and, but they have a child living with the grandparents. I, I wonder how everyday Koreans would have thought about that. But yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Uh, that she dedicated her life you know, for truly raising you know, her daughter to be you know, the, the bride to the Messiah. Yeah, uh, I'd like to just open it up to anyone else who'd like to be first. Yes, Chris, go ahead. Yeah, I just hope um, putting all this together, I must admit I never thought about the relationship to what happened at the fall and the things that are going on, as in Adam listening to Eve and then uh, True Mother's father being steadfast in his opinion, whether there's a connection there. And I just hope one day that all this can be explained properly because it's really fascinating. All of those relationships, I'm sure, had meaning and we don't know the explanation. For instance, um, we don't know what the right way was. I mean, father, mother met father in South Korea, so would it have been better for her to go there and be safe? We don't know, but I hope one day we can get a, a full explanation of this really fascinating relationships. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, Mr. Arad, go ahead. Good morning, Chris. <laughs> Thank you for your comment. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is uh, incredible today's uh, uh, testimony, and uh, uh, we, we are really it's uh, grateful uh, this time, uh, especially uh, it's a testimony with the face uh, looking for uh, Jesus. It's uh, how you know we can be. <laughs> it is uh, incredible, and uh, then uh, we are come from that kind of uh, testimony, you know, spirit and heart attitude. I think. Uh, it uh, came from uh, uh, Jo Won Mo, Jo Won Mo, its grand uh, mother. So uh, uh, I think, uh, all, uh, including a Temonim or like a spiritual group, everyone, all other Christianity is uh, looking for Jesus, uh, Jesus, Jesus, and that's why all our attention is. Uh, uh, only I think uh, we're looking for begotten son, and uh, do not uh, we do not uh, like uh, realize uh, about for mother's side. But this time, uh, you know, we uh, we not gonna understand how God prepared uh, through the mother's side. Then uh, grandmother Jo Won Mong and. Uh, uh, it is incredible. I think uh, uh, maybe she inherited from mother, other, you know, for mother or father. And uh, but uh, it's a, uh, you know, I, I'm really it's uh, thinking where uh, we are standing. I think uh, uh, we are can, can kind of same, a bit same as Joe Wong Mong. I think first generation. Uh, second generation, third generation, and uh, God providence is uh, uh, through three, three generation. Like uh, I sometimes uh, chanting uh, uh, like a Bible with the God of Abraham, with the God of Isaac, God of Jacob. When I was it's, uh, walking, I <laughs> chanting it's a uh, God Abraham, God of Isaac. God of Jacob, and uh, uh, so the Joe Mong is very a uh, practical person, a very strong believe, 
uh, it's an incredible belief. And uh, I think uh, uh, also selling a, a, it's a you know, sewing machine and uh, uh, like, uh, it is incredible uh, grandmother's, uh, you know, a contribution. So they, uh, how I can be, how we can be, you know, such an influence to the, you know, for second or third generation. That's why I was thinking such a, a life and uh, inspire us. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Yes. Uh, who else would like to be next? Yes, uh, Ian. Go ahead. <coughs> Thank you so much. This was really amazing, a uh, bit of a revelation for me today because um, I'm sure this is a similar with a lot of couples. You know, in our movement, we have a separation period and sometimes very difficult to have children and things like that. But I just wanted to share that yes, uh, yesterday was our wedding anniversary, March the 3rd. And we were married in Adelaide before we went to the blessing. And um, my mother was so concerned. She was, you know, she's like Ross's grandmother. She... Uh, united with my dad and joined the church and got blessed but my mother was always so concerned that we should have children and she used to talk to Reverend Quark and people and anyway it's really interesting because we were matched in uh, like January 1981 or like December January 80, uh, 81 and then Ross was conceived nine years later in uh, 1990 and then 10 months later he was born in October 1990 my mother died literally 40 days after he was born. So she was able to sort of hold him for, you know, just a few weeks and then she died. But now I really understand maybe there was some sort of condition between why we had to wait nine years <laughs> to be. And it was a bit of a miracle when Ross was born. Anyway, just wanted to share that. I'm sure there's many church members who wonder what, why we were put through all these sort of long separations and things like that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yes, Randall, go ahead. Um, yeah, also, some people are wondering how come uh, we were in the <clears throat> 1982 blessing and our uh, first child was born in. 1992 that's um you know quite a ways uh basically we had the opportunity to join together if we went to europe and uh you know uh ended our separation period um thanks to black kyung jenny more we had the chance to go to korea and just get signatures of things like this and um basically our attitude was if we don't do it right, then, you know, it's going to have repercussions with the next generation. So we also um, uh, preferred to um, have the separation, continue with the separation period rather than um, uh, try to fudge on things. So, yeah, um, with with some of the um, uh, less couples out there, then, you know, especially the uh, other couples that are around, and being able to see just um, just looking around for examples on uh, who is a good example to follow. And, you know, there's quite a few that have um, these uh, long separation periods. Then, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's possible. Because after our blessing in 1982, some people thought, oh, I won't go to the blessing this time. I'll wait till the next one. And then the next one wasn't uh, until something like 1989. Then instead of, you know, just a few months away, uh, there was like July blessing and then October blessing in 82. And there wasn't a blessing, you know, a few months later. It was like seven year high test for them. And, you know, for some of these members, they, um, you know, really doing it hard 
and um, a couple of them will be looking at me and saying, okay, if you guys can still stay in this separation, then, um, you know, yeah, we can too, no problem. So, um, yeah, many times uh, it's hard and it's much easier if you can see an example of someone, you know, also doing that tough. Yep, I think Randall just died. <laughs> Connection problem. Uh, I think, uh, Jeff, you had your hand up. You wanted to go next. Uh, yes, anyway, I, I guess we can see traces in our own families and lineages. Um, of course, in the case of uh, True Mother's lineage, it's incredibly accentuated these virtues and very much controlled by heaven uh, to prepare to prepare True Mother. Uh, so that was a pretty amazing to folk to really um, to have that today. I remember, anyway, earlier on was talked about. Um, how in the uh, earlier times, um, a lot of the Christian culture, I know in New Zealand, a lot of the young girls, they had what they call a glory box. And that was put under their bed. So from a young time. And so things were added to that glory box for their um, married life. So their whole life, they were thinking, you know, when they were young, that they were going to get married. And this is the preparation for it, you know. So it sort of had a mindset, you know, that that was going to be a special time and you needed to be prepared for it, um, which uh, that tradition is uh, long since gone <laughs> in my generation anyway, but that's certainly a tradition that was in, uh, in some of the Christian nations uh, to have that glory box for women for when they got married. Um, in uh, <laughs> strange thing, but in Africa, as well of you, many of you know, they used to have to have cows uh, the bride's family, uh, sorry, the, um, the, 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 the son's family uh, had to bring cows to give to the um, other family. And uh, it seems like a very strange way, like selling your daughter or something. But in actual fact, what it was is that if you had many cows, it means that you come from a resourceful family and that your daughter is going to be taken care of. And, um, and you had to have the support of your family before you got married. So there's quite a interesting tradition in that and also if the um however if the wife doesn't conceive then you're allowed to take the wife back to her family because they're more concerned about the lineage that they would have descendants so anyway this is a sort of different way of looking at some of the ways that um cultures have tried to prepare their um their you know their time for marriage mrs uh and this idea of separation i mean of course, I find probably in the Western culture, it seems to be quite hard for, um, uh, other than in our movement, should you say, uh, it's been quite hard for us to live separate from our wives and children. And the, we have a, a Korean lady in New Zealand whose husband, uh, uh, they brought them to New Zealand for education, I guess, but uh, the husband went back to work in Korea for maybe 12 or 15 years, they lived separate. And she just raised up the children in New Zealand. Um, so some cultures have that. And I think of Mr. Ito also, his family who, and maybe some of the others who, you know, he lived in Majoro for years and years just by himself. So um, anyway, this tradition seems to have come back in our movement um, very strongly in those early days, uh, which was necessary to make conditions, you know, to secure these families that we have today. Anyway, just a few thoughts. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Anyone? Uh, uh, Kenji, go ahead. Uh, good morning, Reverend Yutaka and uh, all the brothers and sisters of the Oceania. Uh, yes, um, yeah. Uh, just I um, um, came to really. Uh, realize that the, the how the um uh the uh chong uh chong chong uh cho cho monim and um, the temonim uh devoted the christians and uh, the christianity is uh, the uh, wholeheartedly uh, to prepare for the um 
for the uh, second coming. And uh, uh, even even though they got married, their concern is that actually, yeah, especially uh, yeah, uh, Temanim's concern was how to uh, how to meet the uh, the Lord of Second Advent. That's the single heart single heart that they uh, they are uh, um, they are in and. Um, um, that's the incredible uh, the face that the, uh, we are, uh, really need to uh, inherit. Um, then uh, after the true parents have emerged, they uh, really uh, the age uh, age um, got changed um, from the uh, age of the, um, the religion uh, who is waiting for the second advent to um, the religion. Uh, the age of the uh, family, and uh, anyhow, um, I really appreciate for the uh, detail that the um, um, uh, true mother uh, explained in the uh, memoir. And uh, 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 Reverend Yutaka is the really uh, thinking of the importance of the um, the mother's the um, um, the life course uh, in this day, as true mother is uh, leading the whole providence. Um, today. Yeah, thank you. That's the comment I wanted to make. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Reverend Ito, yes, go ahead. Uh, sound. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, many years ago, uh, when father made a public speech that the uh, engineer translated, uh, father said, Jesus should have married with John the Baptist's sister. Uh, you know, what does this mean, you know? Uh, but, you know, Jesus couldn't uh, marry. And the key person at the time was uh, Mary. If Mary has uh, uh, kept the face, the heavenly mission, uh, that has, should have done. But because of, uh, she become a, like a secular woman, and married with uh, Joseph and produced uh, uh, the children. That's why the providence was failed. In this time, in true parents' case, uh, Temunin must be the key person. You know, Temunin kept face, even the husband, you know, asking, bring to the, the house, but uh, she kept the face to, st strong face to, you know, never move. Uh, unwavering face and bring uh, her to until to the to, through father. So Temunim is very Temunim's face was the key point for the providence to produce true parents. I I, I compared the, you know Mary and uh, Temunim. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Reverend Ito. Okay, it's that uh, time, everyone, uh, for us to join together in unison prayer. So uh, let's all just share screen and let's uh, offer together. Okay, let's begin.
you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And uh, have a blessed day. And see you tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you. Live Thank on you very much. Yes. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye, Mr. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.